Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Haley, and today I'm going to be doing my September wrap-up. So during the month of September, I read seven books. I had two three-star books, four four-star books, and one five-star book. So overall the month wasn't awful aside from the fact that I really feel like I got in this place where I like had so many things I wanted to read, but then Contemporary Thon happened, which I was really excited for, but before Contemporary Thon, I was like in a super big fantasy mood, so I feel like I sort of like, I don't know, I do this thing where I like stress myself out, where I have so many things I want to read that I just don't read anything, or I'm like, no, like I need to be reading this sort of book right now, you know what I mean? So I didn't end up getting a bunch read because I like wanted to read just Contemporary and then that's what I did even though I was feeling sort of fantasy and then so far this month actually I've wanted to again read more fantasy but since it's like October I feel like I should be reading like spooky stuff so I haven't actually finished anything yet and it's kind of stressing me out because I have so many things I want to read but I'm just not because I feel like I should be reading like all of my like horror or spooky more fantastical books and I'm not really in the mood for it so you know I digress though. So during the month of September, like I said, I read seven books and the first three star book I read was Bring Down the Stars by Emma Scott. Now this was my first Emma Scott book. She primarily writes new adult romance books and this story is no different. So this story follows Weston, Connor, and Autumn. Autumn starts to fall in love with Connor but she really is falling in love with Weston too. So like she's super into poetry and like deep conversations and stuff like that and Connor is just very easygoing. He's very like go with the flow. He's not super deep or anything like that and Weston is like the complete opposite but him and Connor are best friends so they sort of like balance each other out in that way. Connor like you know plays sports and Weston like reads books and is like super dark and like brooding and likes to write poetry and like doesn't really like anybody he doesn't really want to talk to people he's super mean and like so Autumn starts to fall for Connor because it's sort of easy to he's like you know putting a smile on her face after she just got done with a super bad relationship and she like wants sort of like more from Connor and so like Connor asks for help from Weston and Weston sort of like texts her for him or like talks on the phone to her for him like disguising his voice so she starts to like fall in love with this person she thinks Connor is but like he isn't it's really Weston and she knows Weston and likes him and they have a friendship but it's not really like that but like it kind of is because she like feels this like attraction to him and so it was just a mess and I mean it was good and a lot of people really liked it that I've seen read this book like it's gotten really good reviews from people that I've seen read this book and I can definitely see why like the tension and all that is making people give it four or five stars. I ended up giving this a three star solely because I was so annoyed like I could not stand sitting there listening to Weston be this like perfect guy for her but like we're still talking about Connor like I just couldn't stand it and then they have this really weird like thing where they go to the army and I was just so annoyed with how much Weston was like helping Connor and like was just I don't know like I just really didn't like how much like Weston felt like he needed to be there for Connor and like sort of hold his hand because Connor's super rich and Wesson isn't at all. He comes from a poor family and it just, I don't know, like Connor felt, I mean, excuse me, Weston felt like obligated to help Connor and I didn't feel like he should have and that's like why he didn't even go after Autumn to begin with because Connor like mentioned liking her even though like they... Weston and Autumn at first. I don't know. It was just a mess. Sort of like my thoughts on this book. Um, I just really couldn't stand the fact that Weston was selling himself so short, but this is a duology. So the first part happened, huge cliffhanger, and now the second book will come out and we'll figure out how it all ends and what ends up happening with these characters. So I will definitely be reading it just because I need to know. So the next three star book I read was The Flowers of Evil by Shuzu Oshimi. This is a manga series um, 
the whole series is out but they're just now coming out with these bind up collections so this is the first out of four the fourth one isn't out yet but there's this really cool thing with um the artwork throughout the books and they've incorporated it into the spine so each spine is sort of different as the volumes go on to symbolize the way the story is changing so that's a really cool little tidbit to keep in mind if you end up checking this out however this is based off of the flowers of evil i guess that's an actual book like a literary fiction book um that's supposed to be super popular i don't know it i have never read it but i could still appreciate its works through this manga so essentially this is about a bunch of middle school ish or like I don't know primary school ish aged kids that one of them is this little guy he's um sort of dorky likes to read books sort of keeps to himself he's kind of quiet and he has a crush on this girl in his class and one day he goes after school to like look for something and he sees this girl's gym clothes who he has a crush on and for some reason he decides to take those gym clothes he gets like sort of spooked by something and just like sort of runs off and takes the gym clothes with him and this girl who is also in his class and sits behind him sees him do this and sort of blackmails him from there and she kind of bullies him and makes him feel like crap and I don't know this was very strange I liked it it was so bizarre that I just like needed to know what was happening I just like needed to keep reading it like this girl was just so mean and she was like so obsessed with like the thought that this guy could like be a pervert that's what she kept calling him it was super weird it's super dark I don't know I don't want to give any thing else away so I would definitely um, recommend checking this out if you're looking for like a darker manga I don't know this was just it was super bizarre is really all I can say like that's all I really got for that one <laughs> So getting into the four star books I read this month, the first one I read was The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Maas. This is the prequel novella to the Throne of Glass series which follows Selena Sardothian who is an assassin. When we start the Throne of Glass series as most of you know we are starting with her enslaved in Endovir and this sort of shows how she got there, how she, she sort of got her name as Ardalens. Ardalens assassin. This was good. I gave this four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. I really really liked Sam. The last story was the craziest for me. Um, Arobin is just like such a shitty character. I mean like I mean he's not like poorly done but he just like his personality like he's just a shitty guy. So it was fun reading about that because I like I already knew that we hated him before from reading the first three Throne of Glass books so just sort of seeing like their relationship evolve into that was interesting. I hate that I got close to Sam. Yeah overall I liked this one. The next book I read right before Contemporary Athon which I should have just saved it for Contemporary Athon but that's fine I'm glad I read it regardless and that is Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. This has been absolutely blowing up on book two. Everybody is reading this right now because it's so good. It's so much fun. This essentially follows two best friends Josh and Hazel. Hazel is like the definition of quirky and Josh is definitely not very quirky but he's still just a joy to read about. He's so nice and smart and you know he's just what you would expect the love interest to be for a super quirky fun girl. Um, you know it's just their love story. It's just like a cute little rom-com. I'm sure you guys have heard about it. I really liked it a lot. Um, the last half of the book was very well not half but like the last quarter of the book was very strange. I can't really understand why they like threw in this super serious element at the end um I don't know I had it as five stars and then as I kept thinking about that I bumped it down to five or to four but outside of that I mean there really wasn't anything wrong with this book I mean the smutty scenes were super good the relationship building and the friendship scenes were super good I really liked how fleshed out all the characters were I really don't have any complaints. I mean, I liked Roomies when I read it a couple months ago by Christina Lauren, but I mean, this was just everything I wanted it to be, really. So yeah, no complaints from me. Four out of five stars. Moving forward and continuing on with my trend of Christina Lauren for Contemporary Athon, the first thing I read was Autobiography by Christina Lauren. I also gave this four stars. This follows a guy named 
Tanner um, in high school in his senior year. It's his last semester. He joins a writing class before he graduates. It's supposed to look super good on his resume where essentially he writes a book and like for the whole semester like the class project is to write his own book and he ends up meeting the TA who wrote his own book. His name is Sebastian and Tanner is bisexual but he's not out because he lives in like super Mormonville, Utah and Sebastian definitely isn't out because he's a Mormon and yeah this was just really good really cute it's like their love story them coming together and I talked about a lot of these in my contemporary -thon wrap up so if you're wondering why I'm like grazing over them that's why you can check that out I'll link that up below up below I'll link that up above um but anyway so my only complaint about this was that I had literally just read like a new adult book by Christina Lauren so I sort of knew where they could take their relationship but since this is a YA book they didn't take it there which is fine and I, I know that that's a little unreasonable of me but you know male male romance is my thing and I wanted just a smidge more and I didn't get it and I'm a little shitty about it but it's fine this book was still really cute really good really important I highly recommend everybody reads it I love. So the second to last thing I read this month and during the contemporary thon again which I already have a review for is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. This is about a girl who lives in Toronto and doesn't really know her dad and then her dad gets um, terminal cancer. She goes to Alaska where he's living to sort of hang out with him, build a relationship with him before he passes and on the way there she meets um, a pilot that flies for her dad's like pilot service company and it's their relationship and her relationship with her dad and it was so good. My literal only complaint is that there wasn't enough steam with this and that's fine. I'm here for it but I'm not getting it sometimes so I'm a little shitty it's fine. So then the last book I read this month was my favorite book of the month, favorite book of like the season, maybe of the year, my second favorite book of the year maybe, because I'm pretty sure my favorite book was Female of the Species, um, spoiler alert, but my favorite book of this month, really of the, like the last six months, was Sadie by Courtney Summers. So this book has been, again, everywhere on booktube. Everybody is reading this book right now and I'm so glad that they are because I just loved this. I listened to the audiobook because I originally picked this up, got through the first 40 pages and was thinking, hmm, this would be a really good audiobook. And so I looked to see if there was one and it was on Scribd. So I highly recommend you guys checking that out, even though Scribd is kind of a mess right now. This was just incredible. I mean, this follows a girl whose little sister has been murdered and she sort of has an inkling on who killed her. So she goes and follow some clues to try and find this person. So this is told in a dual perspective between Sadie and a guy who is following her via his podcast. So you sort of get like him, the podcast narrator, like piecing together Sadie's journey after it's happened. And then you also have like the real time of Sadie moving through what she's doing. So, I know a lot of people said that they like saw the ambiguous sort of ending coming. Um, that's fine. I can understand that. Again, I talked more about this in my contemporary thon wrap up, but although this wasn't like super graphic and super shocking, there were a lot of darker elements to this story, such as pedophilia, rape, child abuse poverty, stuff like that, drug abuse, addiction, murder of children. <laughs> like there was just a lot going on in this book. It was dark and it wasn't like, you know, an adult thriller Karen Slaughter sort of book, but it was still really well done. And a lot of things were sort of like brushed over. Like we got like the idea of what was happening, but not the graphic scenes of what had happened. But it was still really well done and it was still really important. And a lot of this was Sadie sort of working through her sister's death and the things she had had to deal with in her life and the fact that like, she sort of had some survivor's guilt, that she hadn't been there to help her sister. And there was just a lot that was here in this book. And I really love to watch Sadie's progression through all of that and through searching for her sister's murderer and it was just I just 
I don't have words for how much I enjoyed this. If you read The Female of the Species this year or even last year, which if you haven't, you definitely should. If you liked that book, you will definitely like this book. I feel like they're very much so in the same vein. Like I said, The Female of the Species, I'm pretty sure is my favorite book of the year, but this will be a very close second to that so far. So I would highly recommend everybody goes and picks up Sadie. Um, I know it's spooky season, so you might be looking for some like really dark, gritty, like graphic stuff right now, but this is still an excellent book, an excellent story, and a very good YA mystery thriller type story. So I really can't say anything else about the story that somebody else hasn't said, but I also can't give it enough praise really because I just enjoyed it so much. This was a very easy five out of five stars for me. So yeah, those are all the books that I read this month in September. Well, last month in September. Um, like I said, I'm a little stressed because it's, you know, October 11th and I haven't read anything or like finished anything yet. I'm in the middle of like four books, which isn't, that doesn't usually happen for me. But keep your eyes peeled for maybe some reading vlogs coming up. Definitely some more wrap ups coming up on time next time and yeah i will see you guys next time let me know down in the comments if you guys have read any of these books and what you thought about them and i will see you guys next time